Hey guys, got a couple of minutes till we start. I am really anxious to see your mushrooms. I've seen Carolyn's and Gina's, it seems like, or Jenny's rather, and it seems like there were more than that. I think. Let's find just on the get it up so I can see here there we go there we go okay now I can see who's here and who's not there we go Carolyn yes I've seen your mushrooms and they are awesome do you have the uh, gold leafing yet to work on them are you gonna gold leaf yours And Jenny's there. Thank you. And Jenny, of course, you let me know when it's showtime. You are you are my clock. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, did you say are you going to use gold leaf with yours? Jenny, you going to use gold leaf with yours, or any kind of leaf, for that matter? Ah, kickoff time. Okay, we are live in action. Thank you, Jenny. Yes, Carolyn's gonna use gold leaf, good deal. Okay, so let's just start off with this mess here that I have been putzing with for the last couple of days. Um, first, this piece of wood. I went ahead and, on the edge of that there, I went ahead and added the coarse alumina from Golden. I just, I really like that grainy texture and the color of it and even though I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint this I went ahead and added it and while I'm talking about that let's talk about adhesion here now I put this lone little little mushroom here on here with the E6000 I did that actually only a few minutes ago and I will say that probably less is more when you're using the E6000 I put a little glob on there and it kind of moved around so probably a little less than a glob would be best and you might want to let it get kind of tacky before you put the mushroom on it. Now this mushroom is finished, I say, you know, you know how I am. And what I did with this, get this really close so you can see, I added the coarse alumina around the edge of the mushroom itself just to add some texture to that and I, I think it gives it a more earthy and organic feel and something else that I did since I used the gold leaf on this I on this one I didn't use the gilding flakes Mushi don't even think about it get down I can already tell he's about to, he has it in his little cat mind he's gonna jump over here um, this was just just gold leafing so I took a little bit of the golden quinacridone Nicolazzo gold and I just very lightly put some over the gold and it gives it that really copperish color. It's, it's really a beautiful color. And I'm sticking to my stuff here. Okay, so let's put that down for a second. He's over there on the other table playing with things. So Lord only knows what's gonna happen here. Okay, so I have all these mushrooms and I put the, um, the coarse alumina. Can you hear that? He's knocking stuff off the table. Of course, alumina on these, and I went ahead and on these I used the gilding flakes. So we're just gonna don't breathe while you do this. I saved two back, and they are already coated with adhesive, so they're ready to go. Now, what I do when I'm using the gilding flakes, I keep them in a container with a lid because these things, once they get airborne, you're gonna have stuff all over the studio what I do when it's got something if possible I just dip them in the gold leaf or the gilding flakes and then I use a this is a fairly it's not really hard but so but it's not soft either and I just kind of brush them away you want to get I, and I don't care if it's hundred percent coverage or not 
It probably will be because I've, I've painted it with the uh, adhesive, so it's probably going to be pretty, pretty covered. I use, try to use the brush simply because it sticks to your hands. Hi, Kim and Nina. These flakes, they have, um, the gilding flakes, they have really big pieces in there. So sometimes you really have to watch it kind of when you stick it on there, it tends to double up and make sure you get those off of there so that you only have one layer. And then I just use my fingers to run around and make sure that I've gotten all that off of there. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at this on here and thinking, I oh, maybe I should, when we do this on Monday to finish up, I'll turn the lights on even though it's going to be hotter than Hades in here. But I will turn the lights on because I really think that you need the light in order to see this. Okay, so that one's done. I'm going to do this other little one. Same way. Just dunk it in there. Get the initial stuff off of there. And by the way, uh, let's see. what did we? Oh, as far as painting, I took the Nicolazo Gold and I painted the stems and underneath the cap of the mushroom with the Nicolazo gold. Nicolazo, Nicolazo, tomatoes, tomatoes. I have no idea which is correct. Okay. I love these gilding flakes. I just. You can buy the leaf in variegated uh, shades, I believe, but I just, I just, I don't know. Maybe I think it, it's just kind of satisfying to, to douse them with the flakes and brush them off like this. It's just something about playing with these shiny things like this that's very satisfying to me. So I can just spend hours sitting here doing leafing. Not literally, but you know. Okay, let's see. I'm not going to do it, but it might be, it might be a kind of cool look if you went ahead and you put adhesive on the inside of the cap and did that in a contrasting, like since this is the various shades of autumny shades, so you know, the maroon and the copper and gold and even a touch of silver in here, and you could do like the inside with just gold, which would be kind of cool if you chose to do that. any other little leaves always put your lid on if you drop it it is not going to be a fun thing okay I also well let's go ahead and talk about the mushrooms how I did these stems on the stems themselves I ended up using white um, transparent red oxide and Van Dyke brown on these and what I did first off was I just, they're already coated with the Nicolazo Gold, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run a little bit of the transparent red iron oxide over them. And I'm kind of starting at the bottom of the um, stem and I, I've got this really watery, this transparent red iron oxide is really watery so I'm just kind of letting it run up the stem. Okay. I love having cats but my god there is cat hair everywhere. 
Okay, we do the same thing on here. Just let it run up a little bit. Jenny, yeah, the gold leaf really, really does. Changes everything. I don't think I've used the gold leaf on any of the mushrooms I've done in the past, but they're really cool. Okay, so this first one is almost dry. Dry enough. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of the white. Just a drop. Spray it with some water. I want it watery. I'm just going for some contrast. I'm not putting anything, well, I'm putting a very, very little bit of metallic on the stems to have more of a contrast. I'm just painting this a little bit down, letting it blend with the red oxide. I can wash my brush out and I can just come back and blend it in. Pull some off if I want to. So then you've got this. And the last thing I'm going to do is get a tiny bit of the Van Dyke Brown. Again, watered down. And just kind of Kind of strap it maybe from the from the cap down this time and let it run that's kind of cool and let them dry and then once that dries Hold on and I will dry it real quick and I'll show you the last step. My cord will not reach all the way over here. We're using the extension cord outside. We're building something. And then I drop it on the floor. That's always, that's always effective. Okay, that's pretty dry. The last step I'm going to do on that is I'm going to take some of this iridescent copper light, the fine, a drop of that, and I'm just going to lightly dry brush almost some on. This gives a, a lot of implied texture to your to your mushroom to the stem. <laughs> okay, it's going to be one of those days. I can tell already. This is, this is the kind of day when I just need to step aside and, and don't touch anything because I'm, I'm going crazy. Um, let's see here. All right, so what else are we going to be? Oh, I was going to do some of the um, Quinacridone Nickel Also Gold onto the tops of these so you could see what that looked like. You don't need much, just a little tiny bit. And it gives it just this warm sheen. Can you see that? It's really scrumptious. I, I that's one of my favorites is the Nicolazo build. I just I love it. I'll put some on this one that just had the gold leaf. Just kind of paint it on there a little bit. I'm using fluid acrylics, so you know, it's not to say you can't use heavy bodied paints, you can, but you're going to need to um, water them down a lot. Just kind of dab it on there. Since I'm using such a, a basic color scheme, not much color, it's just pretty much all the same, I really wanted to make 
the caps look as rich and textured as I possibly can. Let that dry and you've seen the stem okay. um, the rest of the stuff that's gonna go on there I took the greenery and I do these little things like this and I actually painted them with this uh, Holbein luminous green I got the set of the luminous colors not too long ago and I'm just in love with the way they they just make everything more when you put them underneath other things. So I put that on and then I took the gold, the gold, the uh, iridescent copper and I brushed it over that. Now I'm not finished with those, but that's a start on that. And the, that's part of my green family. These little curly cues here, I put another coat of the green gold on there. And then I dry brushed on the copper. On these ribbon-like things, I gave those another coat of the sap green hue and then dry brushed on the copper. Now I have not done these. What I did was I took the Holbein, Holbein, I still don't know what that is either. This is a luminous violet and it's just the most incredible shade. Just look at that I mean it's like it's just like delicious and I painted I painted these three shapes here with those and then these guys I actually took the um, on these I took the luminous orange and I painted it on there and then I took some of the uh, quinacridone violet. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just playing here, okay? I, I never have a clue what I'm gonna do on stuff. I really don't. I just, I start in and I play until it looks the way I want it to look. So I just kept layering until I got that. I wanted them to be a little more in the pink family than this red, so, so that's what I was doing. But I also wanted there to be a difference between those two, and it's slight, but it is, and I coated all of those with the gold leaf adhesive. This is a uh, ladybug. I ordered ladybugs the other day, okay? I, my garden is just overrun. In South Texas, it's like every bug that ever lived is here and eating all my plants. And I've got this infestation of mealybugs and these ladybugs are supposed to help. So I ordered two of these things and it was like 1,500 ladybugs in each one. Put them out in the evening. The next day, I think I saw five and I haven't seen any since then. I'm like, okay, that was pointless. Anyway, so I just saved the containers. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take, and this is a gold, this is more the gilding flakes, but this is Inca gold is the shade that we're using here. I wanted to see if I could get a little contrast going on. So I'm gonna dip it in again. They have uh, these gilding flakes. They have, oh my gosh, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 different um, mixes of flakes. Hey Robin and Monica and Chris. And I was using them for classes, in-person classes. So I had like one of each. I didn't do around here just so that I could hold it while I painted it. You can see a little bit of variety there in there. It's almost a uh, almost a green in there. Really cool. I like the flakes because they come in this in this bottle and it's just packed. I mean it is solid. 
jam-packed full of these flakes. You get a bottle of this stuff, a jar of this stuff, and it'll last you forever. And I'm one of those people that I will walk around and I'm finished. I will be picking up the little flakes and putting them back in there because I can't stand to waste stuff. So let's try one of the other ones. Let's try one of this guy. Ooh. Okay, this could be interesting. <laughs> okay, what's going to happen when I, after I've coated this guy with the gold? I'm going to get some more of that uh, Nicolazzo gold and I'm going to paint over him to bring out the textures. I mean, you can see it when you're looking at it, but I want it to be a little more obvious than that. Do you want, I've also got one of these guys. So I'm going to do one of him, and then we'll try with the Nicolazzo Gold and see what they look like. Even though these are pretty much covering completely, the reason that I painted first is because what if they don't? Like right in there, you can see some of the pink. If it doesn't cover completely, I still have some color peeking through rather than just bare clay. And bare clay is not very exciting. Okay. Put the lid on this. Okay. That's what that one looks like. And that one. And that one. So let's see what those look like with a little bit of um, Nicolazzo, which I think is this right here. Okay. You might be able to see this a little more clearly than you could on the uh, other mix. Now it turned that gold into a whole, just, it's just warm. It gives it that warm color. touch of it. Now probably when I finish up with these I'm going to come up with come back in with something that's going that I will dry brush over these textures to make them pop even more. I haven't decided what that is yet but I'm going to. Okay. So those are in the works there. Got one more here. I have these little these little um, cups and I think I'm going to get something that has more of a silver to it. Hold on. Like this one. This is called Silver Dream. And it has gold and copper in it. But it's mostly silver. So I think I'll use that on those cups. And I have all those done. Okay. Back over here to this. You have options on adhering to this. Now, by this point in time, my um, E6000 has set up pretty well. Okay, that's pretty, I, I wouldn't be yanking it and holding it by that, but it's pretty steady in there. You have another option though, and I'll go ahead and do this because it's gonna be covered up in the meantime. This is Golden's um, Flexible Molding place, Paste. This is a very, um, it's a very different texture than the light molding paste. The light molding paste is more grainy and obviously weighs much less. This is not. This is like a stiff, oh my gosh, it's even stiffer than um, icing. And it has a very smooth, almost rubber-like texture to me. And this dries real hard too. So I, when I get ready to put on here my next one, I can. And I'm grouping mine together. Let's see where that other little puppy goes. Put a little dab on the bottom there, and just can you see that? Sink it in. 
Okay. Now this is going to dry. It's going to dry real well too. And it actually is sticking better initially than the E6000 did. However, I still think the E6000 in the long run will hold it onto your wood better than the molding paste. But just, ah, I'm sticking to stuff. Just to give you an idea of what this looks like. Okay, let's try this other one. And if you get it on there, just wipe it off with your finger or on your apron, which I always do. Okay, I've got a little bit on the base there. I'm putting these in a little grouping. Now this puppy is leaning over pretty far, so probably I'm gonna need to um, help him out here. So what I could do is maybe I could put this jar here. Okay. Just something, I know that's probably totally in your way, but that's holding the edge of that so that it doesn't, it has time to set and harden, and then I can put the next one on there. So what I'm gonna do after that is I'm actually going to use, to after I get everything on there, then I'm gonna use the golden, the crackle paste. Another favorite. This has a texture to it, a lot like the light molding paste, and it is also very lightweight. So I'm not gonna put it on there now because I wanna make sure I have everything on there. When I do it, I will lather it on like I'm icing a cake, but I'm gonna leave it really textural and rough. And the thicker that I put this on, the deeper and bigger the cracks are going to be. Also, that's a good thing and a bad thing. So if you put it on there real thick, which I love, love, love to do, you do have to be aware that when it dries, if you've got really huge cracks like that, the odds are good that a, a section of that may chunk off because the cracks are just so large. So you need to be aware of that. And if a piece does chunk off, you can actually just take a little, uh, a little of the molding paste and put it in that little section and then just press the piece back on there. Okay. Now I'm going to use, when we get to the, the rest of this, I, I use a lot of water. So that's also an issue with the crackle paste. You have to really let things dry in between applications of water. Otherwise all your chunks of crackle are just going to pop off of there and you'll have nothing left. So use your water, paint it on there, and then let things sit overnight, or if it's in Texas, put it out in the sun for five minutes and you're done, and you can put another one on there. Okay. Right. Obviously, we're going to have to have another day of this because there's just too much to do and too many layers to do with this. But Michelle promises not to fall asleep or not. Oh, Michelle, I have to say, I think I really think that's the first time I've actually put someone to sleep. I find that's the most hysterical thing ever. She went to sleep watching the last video and just put her to sleep right out. Yeah, that's better than an ambient, man. That's great. Okay, so what I'm going to do, covered with paint again. What I'm going to do between now and Monday is I'm going to adhere all of my mushrooms. I need to finish painting my stems. I'm going to finish painting my caps. On this one, on most of them, I think I've already put the uh, coarse alumina on here. And I'm going to try emboss, using embossing powder over that coarse alumina. I'm just gonna give it a shot on one or two and see what it looks like. And I'll let you know on Monday whether it works or not because all that has to dry. So you gotta do the stems, you need to do the caps. Um, you're gonna have to put your gold leafing on there. Basically, you're finishing up your mushrooms and getting them ready to go on your wood before you put that crackle paste on there. I have found by trial and error that the crackle paste does not adhere. I tried it where I would just sink the, I thought, okay, if, if I could put this with the uh, molding paste, 
why couldn't I just sink it into the crackle paste and have it hold? The crackle paste will not hold your objects, okay? It will not. So that's why I'm gonna go back and do the crackle paste on Monday, or actually before then, because I wanna do it and have that ready for the last uh, paint on Monday, so we'll get things done here. So I have way more materials than I'm going to need, but better too many than too few. So I would love to see um, your mushrooms and your paint and what you are doing on this. So I will, on Jujus, I will post some close-up pictures of the mushrooms that I have completed with the coarse alumina, with the uh, quinacridone nicolazzo gold, and with the stems done so you can see those better and monday i will use the light so hopefully that's better again if you uh, <laughs> oh chris says what did i use to paint the mushrooms before gold leaf um before gold leaf the, when i basically put it on there i used that maroon that golden maroon it was a heavy body paint and I think I used various things. I used a quinacridone violet, a quinacridone um, uh, magenta on there. So they were pretty much a maroon color and before I put the gold leaf on there, just in case the paint peeked through. Thanks, Jenny. She said, I'm getting a pro at these live classes. I don't know about that, but they're fun. I'm having a good time, and I hope you, you guys are enjoying them and learning something. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen. So I'll do close-ups of all that I've done so far so that you don't have to look at the whole video again just to see what we've done thus far in, in the class. So I'm going to end it there. You've got lots to do before Monday and you've got the whole weekend to do it in. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, remember if you go out, wear your mask guys. This stuff is still there and I worry about people, okay? You guys take care of yourselves and your families, and I will see you on Monday. Bye.